haven't had enough courage to encourage me. Some black ones, some white ones, some Asians, some Asian, Spanish speaking, Native American women, some fat ones and thin ones and pretty ones and plain ones, some gay ones and straight ones. He said, yes, I believe you can do it, Maya. Continue, try. I was, I was, uh, I'm, I'm, I am the, parent, the daughter of uh, two people who, uh, when once they met, they couldn't take their hands off each other. <laughs> and they married, and then they couldn't get along not for five minutes. <laughs> so after a while, thank the Lord, they decided to separate. I mean, for the good of my country. <laughs> Their next moves were not so swift. I was three years old and my brother five. And my mother and father didn't know what to do with toddlers. So, and they didn't want the burden. And so my grandmother, my father's mother, uh, said, send the children to me. My mother and father put me and my brother Bailey on a train in Los Angeles without uh, adult supervision. <coughs> And we arrived in a little village in Arkansas, smaller than McCormick, much smaller than this. <laughs> uh, I think it was thanks to the kind offices of the Pullman car porters and dining car waiters who took us off trains and put us on other trains. We actually arrived in Sam's. I mean, that was 80 years ago, and I still can't believe it. Did we get there? When we got there, my grandmother and Uncle Willie um, owned the only black-owned store in the town. My grandmother was the daughter of a former slave. She had two sons, my dad and, uh, and my Uncle Willie. They needed me and Bailey to work in the store. So I think my grandmother started teaching me to read the afternoon we arrived. And uh, my, my Uncle Willie taught me to do my times tables. Uncle Willie would grab me right here behind my clothes and say, now, so he, he was crippled. His whole right side was paralyzed. Mama thought he was paralyzed because he'd fallen off a porch when he was 18 months old. She never got over the, the guilt she felt for allowing her son to fall off the porch. But he, that was meant we found out years later that it was some neurological malady. But Uncle Willie taught me to do my time sales. He owed me in front of a pot bellied stove with his good hand, big hand. And he'd say, now, Sust, with the slur attendant to his condition. He said, Sust, now do your four six. Do your five six. Just to do your eight six. Do your eleven six. I learned my multiplication tables exquisitely. <laughs> and if I didn't, somehow he managed to hold me, open that part of the stove, and throw me in. <laughs> and found he was so tender hearted, he wouldn't allow a moth or a flea or a fly to be killed in the store. Billy and I would have to find the offender, take him, and put it outside where Uncle Billy thought we just let it go. That's another matter. <laughs> My grandmother died, my uncle died. And I went down to Stamps en route, uh, went down to Arkansas en route to Stamps. I stopped in Little Rock. I was met there by an American treasure who just recently, some few years ago, died, Miss Daisy Bates, a great American. Miss Daisy Bates uh, met me at the airport. She's a girl, I don't have to tell you she was black, but. Right? She said, girl, I know you're en route to STEM, but I talked to people in your office. You're staying overnight here in Little Rock. There's somebody dying to meet you, and uh, I would like to bring him to your hotel tonight. So I said, yeah, it's OK. She brought about 40 people to the hotel. But she brought this black man and all of that. Thank you. <laughs> shake your hand, I want to hug you. I said, I appreciate it. He gave one hug. He said, now you're down here in Arkansas because Willie has died. I was so shocked. 
My Uncle Willie was ashamed, so ashamed of being crippled, he wouldn't allow even, uh, he wouldn't go to Louisville, Arkansas, which was five miles from Stamps and the county seat. This man in a three-piece suit way up north in Little Rock said, you know, the state of Arkansas has lost a great man losing Willie. I asked him, Uncle Willie? <laughs> he said, the United States has lost a great man losing Willie. I said, oh, W.M. Johnson, he said, I mean the world. So I said, will you please, excuse me, let me sit down. He said, uh, because of Johnson Willie, I'm who I am today, he, he made me love to learn. And he taught me my times table. <laughs> I said, how did he do? He said, you could grab me, man. <laughs> he said, now I know you're wondering who I am today. I said, yes, sir. He said, I'm mayor of Little Rock, Arkansas. One of the first blacks in the South. Willie. Black, poor, crippled, Muslim, born during the lynching years. This man was a rainbow in somebody's time. He said, now, when you come down in the morning, I have a, a, a convoy for you uh, to, to look after you, to take you right on into Sam's. Uh, he said, I want you to stop in uh, Louisville, there's a good old boy there. He's a lawyer, he'll look after your, your property. The next morning when I came down, I had to cry. When Bailey and I were taken to look to Sam's, the boys, as they were euphemistically called, would ride over into the black area, threaten, maim, and kill people because they didn't agree with the, the colors of the people's skin. And Bailey and I would, we'd help my uncle with it to get down in the potato bin. And then we'd look out the window and there were these huge men on horseback with huge guns who would ride up into, in front of the store. And they just looked it's too big to be real. Giants, ogres, if you will. The next morning when I came down in Little Rock to the end from that hotel, there were six huge white men with big guns wow. to look after me. <laughs> Don't you see Willie being a rainbow in my clouds? Even then, dead, I went to each one of those policemen. I shook his hand and gave him a big kiss. I said, I want to thank you in the name of my Uncle Willie. I thank you in the name of my Uncle Willie. I got into the car that was driving me. We stopped in Louisville. Mm. This is a good time to tell you this. <laughs> we stopped in Louisville. I expected an older black man with a little punch and a, and a, a watch with the fog and a chain. A young white man ran out of the office and he said, Miss Angelo, I'm just delighted to see you. He said, uh, the, the mayor called me from Little Rock. He's a, he's a most noble man. He's the most powerful <laughs> black man I ever met. Because of him, I'm who I am today. I said, let me sit down first. <laughs> he said, I'm the only child of a blind mother. Your Uncle Willie, I mean, uh, gave, gave uh, Mr. Bussey uh, uh, his encouragement, and Mr. Bussey gave me an encouragement, and now I'm, I'm not only a lawyer, I'm in the state legislature. That was then. Last year, uh, when they broke ground for the Martin Luther King Memorial in, in uh, Washington, D.C., I was one of the speakers. When I finished, when I got off the stage, a, a white man, young, youngish, well, everybody's young to me, but <laughs> a youngish man, he said, Miss Angela, excuse me, I'm going to talk to you. He was holding hands, he had a toddler and he was holding hands with the woman, and she was holding hands with the toddler. He said, uh, I think my families have been enjoying for many years, for generations. You see, um, uh, I just wanted you to know me. Uh, my grandfather helped to secure your property after your uncle and your grandmother died in stamps. He used to be in Louisville. He was the lawyer then. 
And now I want you to leave me because.